Hello my fellow intellectuals, we're going to be solving what the electric field is for a point charge using Gauss's law. So for those of you who are not up to speed, this is probably one of the first examples you'll ever see Gauss's law used on, and we're going to go through it step by step to show you, you know, why we can derive this result. So if you forgot what Gauss's law is, it's written here. I have the equation and some captions on what everything means. So remember that when we're looking at this s here, that means it's a surface integral. We're doing an integral over a surface, which is known as the Gaussian surface, um, hence the name Gauss's law. Then we have our e here, which is just the electric field of the source. In this case, it's just going to be our point charge. I represent it with this q here. It's a positive point charge, but it could be also for a negative point charge. I also have the differential area vector. So that's just the differential area for whatever surface that we pick for our Gaussian surface. And on the right hand side, we have the charge enclosed. And what the charge enclosed means is that we have our, our surface and then we have the charge that is encased or enclosed by that surface. And that's divided by that constant epsilon naught, which is just the permittivity of free space. And remember that this dot product right here, I didn't, I didn't write a description for that, but that dot product just means we're, we are going to find the flux the flux of the electric field through our Gaussian surface. So it's just literally, we can think of it as just like the amount of arrows passing through the surface of our Gaussian surface. Okay, so first off, what I'm gonna do is that we have to pick what our Gaussian surface is going to be. And since we have a point charge, there is a really good uh, reason as to why we should pick a sphere, right? And why should we pick a sphere? Well, I'm gonna give you some um, I'm going to give you an argument as to why we should pick a sphere. Because if, for example, we go out a distance r from our point charge, so let's say we go out to here, and this is a distance r, and we want to find what the electric field is at this point, okay? Well, we went out to this distance of r, but we could also go out to a distance r in maybe another direction, like maybe over here, right? So here's r again. And we want to find what the electric field is here. And the way I've drawn it, it shows that, you know, we have the electric field as a function of R, but the idea is, is that it's a point charge, right? Why should we believe that the electric field here should be any different than the electric field right there? And I'm arguing that there is no difference, that they should be exactly the same value. If you had some device that could measure the electric field at those two points, you would find the same value of the electric field. So the idea is that we want to pick a sphere because for any given value of the radius of that sphere, right, let's imagine we just draw a sphere, not a great sphere, but still a sphere nonetheless. We drew a sphere around our point charge. Then we can say that at every point on the surface of our sphere, right, so at every point on the surface of our sphere, no matter if it's this point or this point or this point, so it's on the surface of our sphere, the electric field is going to be the same because all the points on the surface of a sphere are distance r from the center, right? So this is at a distance r, this is at a distance r, and I'm arguing that the electric field at those points are exactly the same, okay? So we're going to pick, oops, sorry, let me change this setting here, uh, pick, pick sphere as our Gaussian surface. Surface. Okay, and I'm gonna make sure it has a uh, radius of r, okay? So okay, so that's my Gaussian surface. We're gonna integrate the, uh, we're gonna take the integral of the flux uh, over this uh, surface. So let's rewrite Gauss's law one more time. So let me just write it here. I'll write it as E dot dA is equal to the charge enclosed over epsilon zero. Now the charge enclosed, this part, that's easy. So the charge enclosed is just Q, right? I just wrote it, I just denoted it as Q. So I'm gonna erase this. I'm just gonna put Q over epsilon zero. And as I said before, the electric field, right, so the electric field is going to be, not only is it going to be constant, right, not only is it going to be constant at every r here, 
we're arguing also that the electric field, since it, since it's going to be radially outward, let me just pick a different color like red here. Imagine that the electric field is coming out radially outward like this. Here's the heat field. We're going to say that the electric field is going to be parallel with the area vector at each point, right? So the area vector is this vector right here. It's denoted by blue. Here's dA. And the electric field and dA, we're going to argue are parallel. So E is going to be parallel, so this is parallel to dA. All right, that's going to help because remember the dot product, the dot product between E dot dA is equal to the magnitude of E times the magnitude of dA times the cosine of the angle between them, right? This is just the definition of the dot product. So definition of dot product of dot product. Okay, so if that's the definition of the dot product, if they're parallel to each other for a positive point charge, there would be anti-parallel for a negative point charge, but for this case, it's a positive point charge. The angle between them is going to be uh, zero degrees. So zero degrees. And then the cosine of theta, right, the cosine of zero, this is going to be cosine of zero degrees, this is just going to equal one. So E dot dA is just going to be, uh, so we have surface integral, uh, we have magnitude of E, magnitude of dA, and this is equal to Q over epsilon zero. And the thing is, is that for any given value of R, so for any given R, E of R is constant, right? So if E of R is a constant for any given value of R, we can pull the electric field outside of this integral. And we just have E times the surface integral of dA. I forgot the vector hats, sorry about that. And this is equal to Q over epsilon zero. And now we just have to integrate the differential area. So this is essentially you're saying you want to integrate the differential area over the surface. This just gives you the total area, total surface area of Gaussian surface. So the total surface area of the Gaussian surface. Well, our Gaussian surface is a sphere of radius little r. And that means the surface area for our sphere, this is just going to be 4 pi r squared. OK? So uh, the equation now reads e, I forgot this hat here, times 4 pi r squared is equal to q over epsilon 0. And I can solve for the magnitude of e by just dividing both sides by 4 pi r squared, sorry, I didn't want to write e naught too quickly, or epsilon naught, sorry, 4 pi epsilon naught r squared. So that's the magnitude of the electric field. And if we want the direction, as in we don't want it just, we don't just want the magnitude, but we want the direction, I said that the, the electric field is radially outward, so it's just pointing radially outward from the origin of that uh, coordinate system, which means the full vector form is e is equal to q over 4 pi epsilon naught r squared in the radial r hat direction. And that is the electric field for a point charge, specifically a positive point charge. So I hope you found this video helpful. Comment if you liked it, and I will see you guys next time.